I finally got my hands on the $100 RTX 3060 Frankenstein card. This is a 6 gig mobile RTX 3060 that someone in China ripped out of a laptop and glued on to a normal graphics PCB. Today we're going to see how this card performs with the latest drivers in a handful of games. First we'll unbox the card to see if we actually got a 3060 or if this is just a full blown scam. It came in a box inside a box and decently wrapped. No damage from the porch thrower so I think we're okay. Aside the NVIDIA stickers on the fans and a QC label on the back, there are no other markings to tell what this card actually is. It has a plastic backplate and aluminum heatsink and copper heat pipes. There is a whole one HDMI slot included with this beast. Now that we've unboxed this beast, let's get some numbers from some games. First I'll get some baseline numbers from a regular RTX 3060 Aero from MSI. We'll test 5 games to collect our averages for comparison. We'll also give Furmark a run as well. Next we'll throw in Frankenstein. Now the biggest downside to this card aside the single HDMI port is that it requires a special hack driver to actually run. This was more of a problem when the card was first born but now they're pretty easy to find and install. The drivers install without issue and CPU-Z sees it as an RTX 3060 laptop with the correct RAM type and amount. Device Manager sees it for what it truly is. Frankenstein. We run through our 5 test games and Furmark cleanly. Here are the results for 1440p high settings. Cyberpunk was one of the worst of the bunch and probably due to textures filling up the 6 gigs of VRAM. The regular RTX 3060 gets 86 frames per second on all high settings with DLSS at balanced, while the Frankenstein only manages 59 frames per second. Hmm, okay. Next up is Delta Force. The 3060 regular yields 135 frames per second average and the Frankenstein comes in at 123 frames per second. Not bad really considering it's using 110 less watts to do that. Jedi Fallen Order is a surprise as the regular 3060 manages 99 frames per second while the Frankenstein beats it at 110 frames per second. Project Cars is another surprise as both cards hit the same average frame rate at 128 frames per second. Last on the games list is Rocket League getting 280 frames per second average on the regular 3060 and 267 frames per second on the Frankenstein. Once again at 1440p high settings the cheap card is holding its own against its slightly bigger brother. Our final test is Furmark at 1080p. The regular 3060 gets 106 frames per second with a score of 6396 and the Frank gets a respectable 98 frames per second with a score of 5908. I can't stress this enough that this card is accomplishing this using over 100 less watts. It doesn't even need an external power connector at this point. One thing I didn't go into depth on was the temps. This thing runs cool while working so hard. Max temps never got above 63 degrees Celsius on any of the tests. Looking at the final graph, you can see this card is extremely close in performance to a full-blown RTX 3060 while at the same time using 100 plus less watts. Now you won't be able to readily find these cards, but should you run across one while you're planning a super cheap gaming rig, this is a viable option. The Frankenstein 3060 is a card Nvidia doesn't want you to have. A low cost, low power, low temp option to their overpriced lineup. This is why it exists in the first place. It's a big fuck you, we'll make it ourselves. And that's why I love the state of tech in the world today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and perhaps check out some of my other YouTube hits. I love you people. Was that good?